That was the day after yesterday. The cupboard's all in, screwed in. Had to get wee handles put on. I uh, still have these grey crates. There's going to be a stack of grey crates up here and a stack over here. Uh, and you see how the 2x4 is sitting on the floor? I need to put another piece of 2x4 here and a wee bit of wood to level it off so the crates go right back. I'm using these old boards here for it. That was a shelf I paint all sitting on. But here's something here. See uh, these saws? That's a 90 degree angle, 45 degree angle. You put that on there and you draw your line but it's like a spirit level they can be knocked out or they can be inaccurate the only way of checking that is to go to the other side and line your saw up not how much that saws out so the true 90 degrees would be half of that get any piece of wood with two factory edges lay that down on your board bearing in mind if you were doing this you'd have two hands and then what you would do then is you line the front up using your thumb, you feel it, you line it up and then you would draw your line. Once that's lined up perfectly well there, so we've bent that wood underneath, draw your line. And because we've got a couple of lines here now, I'll put the wee arrows there, there's the line we're following. So there's how much our saw's out. That's true square there. Saw was out. And I've got another line to cut down here. Now see that side there's got the chipboard. Don't trust the chipboard. You can cut. Only only trust the factory ages. That's all there is to it there now. Right? Uh, I'll screw that in place now. Put a wee board there, the board behind the level out. Screw it in place. And then uh, that'll hold these great crits. And a whole pile of great crits with things that don't move like the old Amiga computer, Spectrum computer, stuff like that. All stacked inside. And they can stack the whole way up, so they're never used. I might have to move that block of wood. Should fit in there, but I might have to make that block of wood smaller. There's a problem there. Got an old, that's an old gramophone record player and old gramophones. Most of those records are shite records. I bought them when I was 16 years old at the wee antique shop. And there's the one there smashed. Problem with gramophones. I just went to pick it up there. So I haven't broke it down now, but it could have been the box on top that broke it. Um, can't mind what you call that stuff there. Uh, that big LP size is only a, one song. I played at 78 speed. And uh, yeah, that's not going to play much more now. Like. But uh, I'm going to show you a wee experiment you can do with these things. That one's broken now anyway. Um, the gramophone itself. I have uh, one of the records I have in there is God Save the King. That's the old king. Check it, I nearly used it today, you know. But uh, I'm going to try at least a wee experiment what you can do with gramophone and LPs. You can do with both. Let me see this. I'm going to have to buy a new gramophone record. It's been that long. That's completely seized, that winder. Uh, but she was broke there anyway. The wee thing was broke off, the wee thing thing. And all these do, it's very simple. Like That there should be sitting straight. And you know, like the eardrum. If you ever get a diagram for your eardrum, you see that wee long lever? That wee lever picks up the vibrations on the record and transfers it onto that wee steel speaker, a very Brits, and that's what makes the sound. Um, it won't be as loud now as it should be. Each time you play a record, you have to put a new needle in. One needle per record. One record is only about four minutes long. And that's how they worked. So uh, you have to keep changing the needles. And then you get different quality of needles. You know why now you get that gold HDMI leads and stuff like that. You see. I had to try and guess 78 speed. No much coming up. Just to hold this piece of paper for me now. I've made a cone. That's, that's an on the um, safety pin. And you put it on the record. And the vibrations are picked up with the record, vibrate the pan and come through the cone. If you want to make it louder, you get a bigger cone. So if you know it has master's voice, it always shows a great big cone like that there. That's for volume. The bigger the cone, the more volume. You know electricity. I had to spin this with my finger and hold this. And you will hear some music coming out of here. 
So now okay. I'm trying to get a close look on to get the, the music. So. Why do I do the pun now? Found the pun. So that's how I'm getting the sound. Now the pun is on there. The pun. The pun is down here at the hey, end. Well, that's what I'm trying to get out of here. <laughs> I go this far side. What we'll have to do about editing here? Right. So you can go back a wee bit to get the whole thing and then focus under the pun. Okay. I have to try and get the speed going again. The music. It's good enough. Maybe the record had a clean as well. That's all there is to it. Uh, maybe if the record itself had a clean, we'd get the dirt off it. I did try and guess the speed. You make it better now. It's getting the speed right. If you go too fast, it can't get perky. And then as the. Let me see. So if we go really fast, we see you. Well, that's experimental, but thank you. That's how it worked. Things were simple back then, the same way um, radios, what do you call them uh, radios? They used to make crystal radios. You could use a bit of wire, same idea. To make a, an amplifier, you just had a longer wire. So if you strung the wire between 20 trees, you had more, more sound. I didn't use batteries. There's the speed there, like, so you can adjust the speed. Uh, maybe someday I get retired and all, I'll, I'll be able to screw that apart. But like, it's all rust. Um, so the vibrations go up that needle and what has happened here because that wee thing is broke that has to be nice and free this thing here is like the thing in your eardrum it's just not a bit of light now and um, it broke a long time ago that has to be nice and loose so it vibrates onto the speaker and that would be louder the whole idea of this wee thing is that's just out of your speakers and that was pretty loud for the size of it and that done away with the need to have big big giant horns like that there so that, that made it portable there, like, you check out, it was portable. Put that in the back of the dizzy bell, basically. And, uh, that must be a wee break out to stop it. See, I think it's ruined out in the shed, but what can you do, like? Ah, uh, then, even that there, see, leaving the lid open like that. You know, like a guitar. What, what is a guitar or a musical a violin? It's an empty wooden box, and the string vibrating. Amplifies an empty wooden box and by leaving your lid like that there So probably sound louder amplifying the sound as well Okay, lock it. Didn't want anybody playing your records. See that back back in them days they locked everything That's back in the good old days before crime. You had to even lock your record player Second box is the old ZX Spectrum Plus. This is not your normal sp sp Spectrum. This is a plus. This one had the wee rubber keys on it And it was 16 megabyte. I think it was 16 I think the original was two. This was 16. No, this is the big boy here, like. Uh, and when I got my that was the most expensive thing I bought in my life when I bought that. Uh, they were sold out. Waiting list on them. Waiting list. Um, that actual one there is not actually mine. My original one's in another box. That's one I found a skip. The original box. I don't know if it even goes. Uh, you need like a cassette player. You need a cassette player and you load up the tapes. Your, your things came in tapes. I, I loved that game back in 1917. That was my favourite. So that was like, um, uh, 
you know, we game you play with the submarines and the, and your tanks, but it's a battle something. But like that, so it was. Um, you had a joystick and everything. That was high tech. And you see the plunter. No ink cartridges in them days. Oh, you had rubbing. Look how many colours you had in that, boys. We were sport in our day, I'll tell you. Full colour. But, um, £130 it cost me. And it was £130 for the old one. And £130. The new one was just £130. But the old one, they were just the. The old one, they give a free uh, pack of games. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I had to go down to Korean, Boots and Korean. Boots is where you bought your computers back in them days. Uh, the Mega stuff too. That was a brilliant computer, the Mega. I loved the Mega. And uh, that was a brilliant. So I have a full size keyboard to use that miracle thing with. The computer controlled the keyboard. It lit up the keys of the computer. You shot wee ducks and all. But that's a different game there, like. See, how can you throw that stuff out there, like? But, um, I was shaking the day I bought that. And, uh, most amount of cash, £130 cash. And I went down to Boots and Korean and they handed me the game pack. I wasn't supposed to get the game pack. But what was I going to do? I wasn't going to argue with them. So I got the game pack along with the Spectrum Plus. This one now is Amiga. Oh, you know when you get a PC today, you plug something in and it goes. And it's not even crash anymore. See back in these days, the start of the computers, Everything was a headache. Everything was expensive, and everything was a headache. Um, they used, um, was it a squirrel? They called it. Serial drive. Squirrel serial drive. So there's a squirrel serial drive there. Anything you had, uh, the Mega was deluxe. It had floppy disks on it. You could buy floppy disks, um, readers and stuff. And you copy disks and stuff. Well, that, 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 was the, that was the thing to do, like. And uh, so that was the start of the squirrel's device there. There should be a big cable to start it off. You start off with a group big, enormous cable, and one would link on to another, like Christmas tree lights. And the very last one in the line, you'd put this block to terminate the line. And so you could get that, you know, getting DVDs, um, things as well. But this one here, that I've got here, that was big money. And what that was, do you know when you had your Betamax and your VHS video recorders? One worked and one didn't. And you had your Square Wheel and you had Sky Dish. The Square Wheel was uh, digital. The Sky, the Sky Dish wasn't digital. It wasn't uh, HD, I mean. It wasn't HD. So the Square Wheel was far more advanced. But Sky won, won out at the end. Betamax would have been the better video recorder. But VHS, whoever gets in first gets a, gets a hold of the market. You to do better. Um, you had EZ drive, because you've always got two of everything, and you had zip drive. Zip drive was a lot smaller. It was a hard drive, but you took the dust out. So that cartridge there would come out and go into your box, and then you could put another cartridge in. So that cartridge there was a big 135 megabyte box. 135 megabyte. How some stuff in that. Bear in mind a wee floppy disk. You could probably get 10 programs on a floppy disk, you know. And then that would hold millions of floppy disks there. You even include the on free. You see, you, you plug them in, you just didn't go. They just didn't go. If you didn't know anything about computers, you'd never get it going. You sort of... You buy stuff and it'll take you a month to get it going. You'd, but what you could do is, um, let's say a missing file or something. A Ziggy Wiggy file missing. And you could go into another game or something and go through the file folder and get Ziggy Wiggy file, drag and drop, and then she might go like that's the way the Mega worked. And the joysticks were more advanced, you had quick fire joysticks and stuff, automatic fire and all on it. Micro switches, micro switches were a big thing. You hear the click? A micro switch was leading age, leading age, leading age technology, it even had a mouse and all that. Right there. But the mouse had the wee roller balls. And then we things there would get covered in hairs and block up and you had to take the wee cover off and clean them. And some schools there, not when I was at school, we didn't have computers. But some schools, we buggers would steal the balls out of the mice. So I know once told me you had to leave the mice upside down so a teacher could check the balls were still in them. Okay. So that's the mega stuff. The mega computers are in the bedroom underneath my wardrobe. Keep them dry and hopefully they survive. That's the ABC printer. So it's all. This shed is full of stuff. Wow, I've wasted money. And this is where this belongs. Although it wasn't a waste of money in this time. The Mega Computer, brilliant. I loved it. 
and all a box of Spectrum stuff, all the wee Spectrum games and all. And you see, you want a joystick. You had to buy an adapter for a joystick. No USB back in them days. So you had to plug that big adapter in, so you could plug in a joystick. And you could get all them dust now on a, on a DVD and play it on a PC. But that's all the original tips there, boys. Look at the user guide and all, like. Spectrum Plus user guide. Uh, if you play it, it goes. Back now, if I got there. Uh, input. Gee, I used to go every week and buy this. So input was the do with programming. So basically, you could um, type in a whole lot of commands. And if you spent, if you spent a half a day typing in commands, you could probably get a wee American flag or something like that. That's what input was. It's teaching me about a program, but the program was pretty easy to follow after a while. So uh, see, like one o, everything started off five, one o, two o, three o, four o. So you could. 10 for N and all, you could put in beep and stuff like that, and you can mess about. That's just the basic programming of, of it. But uh, bearing in mind that when the first space shuttle took off, it didn't have much more memory than this computer. So if you knew how to program something, you could get it to do stuff. A wee bit of space in that box there. I need to get something else to fill that box up. This one here is an old video recorder. I don't think it was working right the last time I tried it, and all the old video tapes. And I was thinking now, if I got a tripod, I can even put my GoPro on a tripod, play the video recorder on my QLED TV and record what comes off these videos. But I know videos have got damaged. What happened whenever I read out my old bedroom to put the kitchen in? I read the bedroom out oh, well over a year ago, a year and a half ago. And everything just had to be lifted through under these boxes. And some of the tapes and all were already damaged. They were lying below the bed and the damper got at them. So, I'll stay on here now till probably, probably next summer. I'll have a go at trying to get the information off them. There's some more computer parts for Mega and all the box. There's a squared cable. Can you mind how much them boys would cost? If, you know, gold plated and all. Cost a fortune today. Massive big cables, and that's what the Mega used to try and get DVD players and all. Not DVD players, external hard drives. Squared cables, and you link one to the other, to the other, to the other. So you might, you know, that's why people have big computer desks in them days. This stuff here, this was a very, 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 very good camera. Brilliant camera. Never had a camera like it before. Uh, the zoom lens and everything on it, it's 35mm, it takes film. Uh, the all digital. Uh, it uses mirrors inside. Whenever you look through the viewfinder, I want to see if this works. Whenever you look through the viewfinder, what you've seen is the exact image you, you take. The old 35mm cameras would have the lens in the front and a wee viewfinder to the side. And if you did something real close up, like that we wood grain or something, you would not get the picture you were seeing. That there, you could see exactly what you were seeing. And most of these cameras back in the day, you had these, let me see, it should pull out. It pulls out, zooms out and all like, and you can manual focus and stuff. But she did it all motorised. Um, if you take the lens off, you see all the sensors on the side. Uh, 35mm is all gone now, we see. So, the lens just came off, and there's the mirror. And what would happen was, whenever you took your picture, that mirror would flick up in the air, and then allow the, the phone behind to get the exact picture. So, that wee mirror is like a periscope. It allowed you, to, when you look through there, it allowed you to look right through that lens. But flick out of the way to get the photograph taken. See all the electronics in it, like. Brilliant camera. I had uh, two lenses for it. But, uh, that's all digital now, isn't it? 35mm film with them in the back. So you couldn't throw nothing like that out, could you? Fuck, there's a film in it, boys. It's ruined now. Ah, we never know what was in that film. Never know. Um, and then again, um, there's the other lens. The flash gun was brilliant on it. I never came with a case in them days. Flash gun, when you took a flash, she would uh, sound like a jet recharging. And then you went, 
Um, infrared, she would shine the red light in somebody's face and uh, work out what flash was needed and only the right amount of flash came out. Uh, you see if you could test it and all like, you see if you stood down at, along a main road and flashed somebody, they think they were caught by a speed gun. That is bright like, some power on it. Look, some batteries too, they power these things like. But like, folk back then were using flash cubes. Uh, camcorder. Digital camcorder, that was, um, the, them as VHS camcorders there. So they took a videotape. And, uh, hang on to see, that's VHS, that's disc. So that took, a, that took the wee mini disc. I had a pack, where, 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 when I need a pack of this. But they're all, they're all so sort of disaster. If you keep thinking you could um, just film, put on the computer, impossible. They, if, if I film on this phone now, this phone's doing MP4. The GoPro does the MP4. These were not MP4. You had to use special software. And to edit on a computer, even though it was digital and all the rest, they're not, they're a hassle, hassle. That took SD cards. And when I bought that, and it was digital, I thought, well, I could fill them onto the SD card and uh, just put it straight in the computer. Or I took the wee mini disc as well. Didn't work that way. Did not work that way. Software. I've done one or two videos, very old videos. If you want to do a video, the computer would crash 20 times. And you always think, oh, I need a harder, bigger computer. Hard drive and all bolt under it. Read, write. Then we had rewrite plus and rewrite. Um, two different types of rewrite things as well. It's always two of everything. Uh, this one in here. I wonder if um, digital video camera. I don't know why I don't have the mini disc. Can't remember which one the mini disc. But then again, I'm going to have to hope they work and try and get things converted. Uh, there's an R. See, people are sport now. They see all these boys with smartphones and all the rest. We see what this does here. Ah, oh, there, boys. Pocket TV. Pocket TV. They were big money in the day, you know. You see, this shit, I'll tell you, the amount of money I wasted in my life, the number, I had that overtime and all, back when I was young, to buy the like of that. And the, the quality of that wasn't very high. Why so in batteries? Doesn't work today, it's the old terrestrial. So even if you powered it up, it's not going to work. But you can't throw it out, can you? Like, But I would say, like that there, like, it's not like um, I go in the caravan now. It was a novelty. The fact you could watch the TV, you wouldn't have sat down and watched the movie on it. You know, but it's just a fact it's a pocket TV. It was the thing in its day. It's a bit like the money disc recorder and all. Yeah, money disc. In fact, I've got more, more crap in the house. I've got the Arcos thing trying to get TV and I have uh, the wee mini disc player mini disc player was good when it came out at the start but then again you were, you were stuck with software Sony made the mini disc player and they made it so you couldn't copy tunes so you if you had a if you had a CD or something and you wanted to convert it onto your mini disc player you had three goals I must bring them out now and put them in here I don't know, go and get them now a whole bunch of crap in my house. The art cost player, that was an all big waste of money. Or you could do TV and everything, record TV. This is a way back before, you know, back at the beginning of the time. Never worked. Never worked. Um, so a lot of this stuff I can chuck in here. Electronics. See, I forget a half half of the stuff. Find the money disc player. But I'll put this in the box. I'll keep that box on the top. If I find the mini disc player, I can throw it in. But I'll put this in as well. This is uh, my first projector. I made this bracket for it here to hang from the roof. And uh, done the job. The bulb. These old projectors took bulbs. And the bulb would last about 2,000 hours. And it had a timer on it. You could check the timer. Depending on how bright you played the projector. Depending on how long the bulb would last. Uh, this was a Casio projector, so it would be 720p, it's not HD like, but um, it gave a wee cover to keep your lens clean. And it's definitely it's a higher quality to look at than what the projector I have now. 
When you look at that lens, she's totally spotless. The projector I have now says if there's any dust inside the lens, they had a firm slap on the top and the sides to knock the dust off. So it just shows the bulk quality difference like. Uh, you had to readjustable feet to keep her level. But as far as keystone, anybody knows about projectors focusing keystones, you had to do it manually. Yourself, it's not that hard to do. I could just about reach it lying on my bed. You had your controls and all here, like to work it. And like all projectors, if you turn it upside down, you've got to turn it, tell it's upside down, rear projection, forward projection, and all that. It's an EMP TW10. I bought that while I was still working in Adria. And Adria's closed down 17 years. So that projector is between 17 and 20 years old. I never did do the, 20, the, the 2000 hours because if you left it, you switched it off. Where the new projector I have now, uh, you, you don't have to worry about the hours and that. But um, that projector was near 500 pounds. Big money back in this day. The projector I bought for the new bedroom was 260. Of course, to show you the difference, like. But so that'll go in the box along with the other stuff. Every time I die, they'll be getting a skip, and all the stuff will be going to a skip. It's pies more junk all around there, you know, like a mirror board motor with only nine hours done on it. Uh, the pure scooter wouldn't even have ten hours done on it. Car seats that I never used. This shed's just full of stuff. Even that wee nest up there is not used anymore. The wee bird might come back next year. The bird didn't even finish doing that nest. So I might come back next year. And you never know. I might retire. And uh, I might get a nice wee bench and I'll put along there. And get all these computer stuff all set out. I'll be able to have a wee wheelie chair up and down. And get a nice wee carpet in here. And the sun shining in. I'll play with the old computers like the old days.